Recorded live from Go Theater in beautiful Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and sponsored by 918 Comedy and Lumberjack Attack, it's Unloading Me Presents. Tonight, we welcome Mauricio Flores, Juju Rashad, Lacey Rain, Garrett Barbie, and as always, your host, Jared Ralphie Allen. Go ahead, cut it. Welcome, everybody, to Unloading Me Presents. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing good? Have a good night? Thank you all for coming. You guys ready for a good night of comedy? I can't hear you. Are you guys ready for a good night of fucking comedy? Nice. So as we're in a movie theater, by the way, I am Jared Ralphie Allen, your host. Uh, thank you very much for that, that one guy back there. See me after the show. You can find me on Grinder. Available now. Anyway, um, as we were in a movie theater, I thought, you know, let's fuck with the audience a little bit. Let's name out some favorite movies. Anybody have a favorite mo- movie? What's your favorite movie? You got a favorite movie off the top of your head? Come on. What's a childhood favorite? You know, Schindler's List. Garden State. That's your favorite childhood movie? Okay, I mean, I watched the adult version called Sopranos. <laughs> That's all I got for the Garden State. Fuck New Jersey. Anyway, uh, you guys ready for your first comedian tonight? I said, are you guys ready for your first comedian tonight? All right, our first one, man. We're starting off strong. Please give it up for the one, the only, Lacey Reigns! Hello, Go Theater. How's it going? How's everyone doing tonight? Incredible, incredible. My name's Lacey Rains. I always thought that that was a great stripper name. I thought I would make an incredible stripper. Uh, but then I learned that I can't twerk. For me, it just kind of looks like this. So I wasn't making a lot of money in stripping. Um, turns out the mic stand was the pole that my parents should have feared all along. I'm able to embarrass them consistently all the time with all of my clothing still on. It's a great feeling. Uh, Happy Women's Month to everybody. Incredible. I am your token woman performer this evening. It's great to be here. Let's make some noise for all the women that we know. Uh, Make some noise for your moms. Nice. Make some noise for nurses who happen to be women. Hell yeah. Make Make some noise for sluts. Yeah, Yeah, everybody give it up for sluts. Uh, Make some noise to all the Catholic girls who came out to their Catholic moms as bisexual just to end up engaged to a fucking man. Whee! Give it up. I am excited. I'm getting married in October, which feels uh, really nice. Thank you. I'm pumped. I'm stoked. I never thought that I would get married. I got bullied a lot as a kid. I got a lazy eye, and my nickname growing up for a long time was Cold SpaghettiOs, which was humbling. I had the unique experience of being diagnosed with autism two times, because my mom kept being like, nah, she's good. She thought that I would grow out of it. I had a real hard time with food. One of the only things I could eat was a cold can of SpaghettiOs. So I'd bring it with me every day to my public school and slurp them on down in front of everyone. Then go home and cry, because no one wanted to be friends with cold SpaghettiO girl. Uh, So I think it's extra impressive that I got somebody to marry me. I'm really proud of myself for that one. I'm getting married to someone who's a little bit older than me, and people keep wanting to know what my father's reaction to that was. Uh, But my dad's like an older, conservative attorney, so he was far more pissed off at me when I told him that I had gotten the COVID vaccine. Luckily, the COVID vaccine can't give you autism a second time. So I kind of feel like I'm in the clear on that one. Um, I'm getting married to a man, and I think that's been very confusing for my mother uh, because she found out that I was a lesbian when I was 15. I gave up the SpaghettiOs and switched directly to narcotics. I fell victim to the SpaghettiO narcotic pipeline, as so many of us do. And I like to write about my experience with all the different drugs I was trying out. Uh, But I have a Snoopy mom. She was always reading my diary. So I had to write about the drugs in code names. And I chose to write about them in lady names. So I write about Laura and Val and the great love of my life, Addie. (laughs) And one day my mother pulled me aside. She said, Lacey, I read your journal. You're way too young to know that you're a lesbian. No worries, Mom. I totally hear you. I'm not a lesbian. I am, however, a drug addict. And I don't know. She was so much more comfortable with that. 
much easier to work through. My mother caught me with drugs one time. She caught me smoking weed once and made me call the city prosecutor's office on myself for her own fun DIY version of Scared Straight. I got to go meet with this guy at a Starbucks uh, and he started talking to me like I was a character in the last season of Breaking Bad. He opened with every meth lab operator I've busted started with weed. And I would hate to see another pretty girl lose her life to drugs. First of all, sir, I did not start with weed. I started with pills. So I'm already one step ahead of all the meth lab operators. Second of all, another pretty girl. What do you have done if you'd walked into the Starbucks and been like, oh no, she's fucking ugly. I think you would have let me keep my drugs then. We would have had a heart to heart. And like, listen, it's gonna be rough out there for you. You can smoke some weed if you want, just shut the fuck up about it. Uh, I'm doing a lot better though. I just turned one year sober, which feels really good. I'm excited. Thank you. I've struggled with substance abuse issues since I read the Bible for the first time. I saw that Jesus was the most high and I took it too literally, you know? I took that as a personal challenge. I was like, Jesus, the most high? Not on my watch, watch this. Uh, but that backfired. I did too many drugs and made it my life's goal to hook up with somebody from the reality TV show, Wife Swap. And then I achieved that goal and it just felt like a weird victory. So I knew that it was time to sober up then. Um, since it's Women's Month, let's talk about some women's issues. Yeah, let's get into it. Where are all the men at? Can all the men make some noise? <laughs> Fellas! Any of you guys, uh, any of you guys sleep in with women? Yeah? Yeah? Don't you guys hate it when you're sleeping with a lady and suddenly the daunting reality of climate crisis really dawns on you? It's a huge mood killer, you know? Pussy's not the only thing that's heating up. Not in this country. I think something happened with a lot of men a while back. Women, we started to collectively bully you guys for not knowing where the clit was. We made a lot of memes about it, we made TikToks about it, and you guys got very sensitive about it. So some of you learned where the clit was, but that's the only thing that you learned. And now in bed, it's the very first thing that you go for, and it's jolting. Some of you guys look like you're immediately trying to start a small fire with your hands, just right away. It's scary, you know, you gotta build up to that. Uh, I've been doing this thing lately where I call my clip Pinocchio. Because uh, she gets just a little bit longer every time I have to fake an orgasm. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have to fake orgasms very often. I come way too easily. And I thought that was a universal problem. I thought that we were all out here coming all the time. Uh, and that's not what's going on with women at all in this country. Uh, the orgasm ratio is terrible. I don't know if you guys have heard about this or not. Uh, but sometimes after I hook up with a man, uh, he'll act like he's some sort of sex god, you know, and I got to bring him back down to earth. Like, buddy, I would have came if I closed my eyes and thought about Nicolas Cage for long enough, you know, especially in the movie Wild at Heart. Honestly, I probably could have got off even for the 9-11 movie that he did. <laughs> the man's a national treasure. Uh, another thing I think men have got to stop asking, is this the best you've ever had? Uh, while you're in bed with girls because frankly it's a conversation that most of you guys are not ready for you know like a lot of us own vibrators uh, I think you need to be more realistic about where you fall in this lineup order uh, one time a gentleman said that to me while we were in the middle of hooking up he said is this the best you've ever had and without missing a beat I said fifth and that was not a cool thing to have said uh, I'm not a cowgirl, but I think girls that are really good at riding dick cowgirl style, you guys are better fit to serve this country than any current elected official. <laughs> riding dick is absolutely exhausting. Uh, I think that we should make it part of the presidential fitness exam. I want to know how long Joe Biden can do that for. <laughs> I'm starting to get worried that Joe Biden can do it better than I can. Because personally, 30 seconds in, I'm freaking done. I'm ready to call it quits. I start to pull out cheat codes. I'm like spelling their name with my hips. I'm trying to do dirty talk, but I grew up Catholic, so it comes out all wonky. I'm like, this is my body, bro. 
eat of it. For the sorrowful mystery of the weeping pussy, pray for us. One time a guy was fucking me and I just went, uh, I want to fuck you till you're dead. And that's actually a huge improvement in my dirty talk. I didn't understand how it worked for a long time. My first boyfriend said he wanted me to be mean to him in bed. So I asked him how he failed English class two times. <laughs> and that was the wrong thing to have said as well. Um, I like to play this fun game when I'm bored where I'll get onto Tinder and change my age setting to 50 and up and then make my bio say, I've never been on a boat before. <laughs> it's a great way to fail your weekend plans. Uh, you shouldn't use Tinder if you're fucking stupid. <laughs> and nobody really warned me about that. So the first time I got on Tinder, I matched with this guy named Scooter. And I was feeling real brave, and I was in a mood. So I shaved above my knees and drove to this guy's apartment and didn't tell anybody that I was going there. Uh, and the red flags appeared immediately. The first red flag is when this guy said he just moved to this apartment and didn't have a gate code yet. I was like, how do I get in? He was like, wait for another car, drive real fast behind him. I was like, all right. I made it into the apartment. Uh, when I got upstairs to his apartment, uh, Scooter had no furniture or water, or electricity. Uh, and he was nice, so we talked for a little bit, and then I tried to exit the apartment, and Scooter would not let me freaking leave. Only something is very wrong with me, so I thought this man was flirting with me. I was like, oh, we're playing a little game. He doesn't want me to leave. But no, he, he was holding me hostage fully in this apartment. Uh, it was scary, but luckily we worked out a deal, and for the low price of $300, I left the apartment. I then proceeded to date this man for six weeks because I am fucking stupid. The last time I ever saw Scooter, I dropped him off in front of his apartment. He jumped the fence and I never saw him again. The last update I got on Scooter was that he was in Nevada getting sober from meth. So everybody give it up for Suber. He made the right decision. I'm so proud of that guy. You guys, thank you so much. My name's Lacey Reigns. That's my time. Keep it going for Lacey. Oh, that was a killer set. Uh, I have some notes. You told me off screen that your favorite movie was Face Off with Nicolas Cage. Yes. I was going to say, after hearing that set, you look like the kind of girl that's masturbated to the Wicker Man. Yeah, yeah. Either that or like what? Like National Treasure? Yeah, try to steal a declaration of clit dependence. I don't know. Fucking, I don't know. Yeah, we can't do it all. I'm just going to say, you brought up, you know, that uh, you're a little bit early to come. Hey, I'm just going to say, as a guy, I come every time. Okay? Yeah, every damn time. Sometimes early. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Fuck. Yeah, Lacey, you did awesome tonight. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Lacey, everybody. Ah. Uh, talked about don't being stupid on Tinder. That's what plenty of fish is for. Fuck. <laughs> uh, you guys ready for your next comic? I say you guys ready for your next comic. That's what I like to hear. Oh, this is a good friend of mine. Give it up for Mauricio Flores. First of all, I'm not married. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I, w I wanted to have a really non-racist show tonight, but these Mexicans. <laughs> well, before I start, uh, thank you so much for coming. Give it up to you guys. Yes, yes. I see a lot of couples here tonight. I do. I see a lot of couples here tonight. Um, is that some, that's kind of obvious. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you guys made it through COVID, right? <laughs> like, COVID either made you or broke you. And I was uh, sadly part of that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's fine. It's fine. Um, as you can tell, I know, I know these motherfuckers over here. Uh, <laughs> 
and and, uh, and, and I, I want to start asking you guys, since I have a uh, 15 minutes here, we gotta get through this fast. White people, is there something you hate about Mexicans? Oh no, no. All right, Mexicans. <laughs> I'm just saying, I know. They were going to start bitching. Oh, my God, they don't like spicy food. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, I, I am Latino. Uh, Mexican, by the way. Uh, you can tell. You can tell by the moment I spoke. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, for a long time, I thought I was uh, part of the LGBT community. <laughs> Give me one second. Um, I always thought uh, the, you know, um, the B stand for uh, bilingual. <laughs> it actually stood for bisexual. And I had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, I uh, just have a bunch of dudes trying to give me butt lights. <laughs> so uh, I, ha I had to stop him. I'm like, you know what, man? Um, Coronas from now on, please. Thank you, thank you. They say that tequila makes her clothes fall off. Maybe it does, maybe it does. But Bud Light will make a guy's cooler hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually, uh, as, as you can tell now, uh, I have uh, male friends, female friends, gay friends. We love everybody here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Include everybody. Um, when you go into a breakup, and you tell your girl, your female friends, hey, you know, we broke up, you know, this and that, shit happened. You know, they always come back with like, I told you. I told you I didn't like that bitch, right? When you tell a gay friend <laughs> that you broke up with your girlfriend, they tell you all women are bad. <laughs> they start massaging you, <laughs> try to get you to, you know, join the team. But I mean, it's something you kind of know uh, already, so we're going to leave it at that. Uh, recently, I had to bro break up with a girl that, that was into crystals. Yes, crystals, rocks, all that bullshit. <laughs> Zodiac, sign <laughs> Zodiac signs. Um, I actually, it wasn't hard for me to break up with her. I just had to tell her that retrograde was coming. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you something kind of crazy, and you're not going to believe um, I actually like dating older women. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they uh, they bring something to a relationship that you know uh, young chicks won't do. Um, respect, you know. Uh, you know that just yes, comfortability and a house. Usually, usually, you know, the house is being paid for by her ex-husband. <laughs> you know, nice house, uh, basketball court, pool, big yard. Um, but there is something about older women. They, they like to foreplay quite a bit. Yeah, because, you know, you got, you got to get them excited, you know. It's a little, it has been a while for them, so. So, so, shut your phone up. <laughs> um, so, uh, usually, uh, you know, you can get away with the whole doctor, nurse, you know, uh, you know, uh, dentist, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you under. Ugh, you won't know what happened to me. Uh, but <laughs> um, she was really into, you know, more Latino stereotypes. So, I used to be her... Uh, Lawn man, you know. <laughs> yeah, she clearly was the owner of the house. Uh, sometimes you ha you know you gotta pull out the old weed whacker <laughs> <laughs> to trim that bush, because <laughs> they they didn't know older women like vintage porn. <laughs> um, and uh, sometimes she would just, uh, you know, she would see me running out of stamina, and she would say, you know, you got, you got to give it more gasolina. 
<laughs> oh man. And uh, one time I was actually um, expanding this whole game, um, and she had a pool, she had a fence, and you know where this is going. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't. Uh, so I had to pretty much uh, make it across the river, jump the fence, pass the immigration worker. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell her I, I would do anything to stay in this country. <laughs> hey, she liked it. Um, I've been noticing, uh, I'm from Tulsa. I know this is Broken Arrow. Give it up to you guys, Broken Arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nobody likes Broken Arrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. You get, Broken Arrow thinks it's very nice because they don't have homeless people. <laughs> you guys, uh, your, your quick trips don't house the, the, the homeless. Uh, the other day I got stopped by a homeless person um, trying to get some money from me. And I had to tell them, man, I honestly, I don't have any, any cash on me. I, I can't help you. He said, you, got ca you, you have cash up. <laughs> I'm like, how do you have a cell phone? <laughs> how do you have a cell phone? Do you got the homeless plan? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting really sneaky with this, you know, asking for money. Um, I am getting older, and I gotta be honest with you guys. I had to take a nap before coming here tonight. <laughs> Anybody else had to take a nap before coming here tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I I remember when I was young, I could I could live off of two hours of sleep in a Red Bull. Not now. I need like a good 30, 30 minute nap before I do anything else. I actually. It's hard for me to get out and do stuff. But don't get me wrong, I like being invited. I just hate going to places. I get mad when I don't get invited, you know? <laughs> but when I, whenever I actually make it to places, I'm late. <laughs> Mexican people time, there we go. You know, I was really, I really didn't understand that phrase before whenever, um, uh, they said Mexican people time. Actually, um, whenever white people have a party, you guys are on time. <laughs> like, like, if you, if you ever if you ever see a Mexican showing up on time to the party, they're pretty much helping the other Mexicans set up the party still. Because <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, I, I like partying with white people, though. I'm gonna tell you that I have a lot of white friends. Yeah, yeah. Jared's one of them. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, you know what I what I like about partying with white people. You guys want to drink a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah, and then uh, just what I, I don't understand. Whenever you guys drink a lot, you got you guys turn into rowdy Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> You guys start saying shit you don't mean. <laughs> like, you start saying shit like, I hope Biden gets reelected. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care, honestly, we don't care. Uh, you start saying shit like, let's free El Chapo. <laughs> you start saying shit like, Viva Mexico. And then, and then I, gotta stop, I gotta stop my friends and I'm like, Todd, you know, calm down. <laughs> Calm down, Todd. <laughs> Todd turns into Carlos real quick. <laughs> I gotta get Kristen. Kristen, stop your husband. <laughs> He's embarrassing us. Um, growing up, I was really naive. I had a lot of friends that were uh, into drugs, like cocaine. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Let, let all your business out now, right? Um, I was so naive. I'm like, man, they must really like powdered donuts. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I'm like, man, this this dude is eating powdered donuts every day, you know? Osito bimbo. Um I I did get a I I do want to start 2024, you know, better than he had already started. Um as you can see, uh we're we're all gonna die. Um PDD is going to jail. Uh Gypsy Rose is free. <laughs> Biz McMahon is you know doing his nasty stuff. <laughs> um, and I, I wanted to start off, you know, a year healthier, so I went to the doctor and, you know, did some blood work. What can I do to, you know, fix my health? So he took a blood, blood sample of me, and um, he got back to me with the results. He told me, hey, dude, listen, you need to cut down on Coke products. And I, fi and I agreed. I told him, yeah, you know, the sugar, the carbs, you know. That's really bad for you. Uh, but he actually stopped me and he's like, dude, honestly, you have a lot of fentanyl in your system. <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah. I'm surprised I'm here still. Um, <laughs> I, I, like, I like going to the gym, but I, uh, I like parking up front because I feel like I'm helping the, the new gym members, because, you know, if, if you're coming to the gym, you got to park all the way in the back so you can burn, burn those calories, you know? And um, I, I, see a, I see a lot of girls complain about being, you know, like, watch while they're working out and stuff like that. Um, you know what it is? Actually, I think guys have it worse at the gym because we're actually back in the locker rooms uh, with, you know, People just getting naked. <laughs> yeah. That, that's not a sight you want to be around all the time. I'm going to tell you why. Because you, know, you guys know the difference between an a older guy that's in shape and an older guy that's not in shape? I'm going to tell you the difference. It's nothing. They both look like shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, you seen bigger girls with saggy titties. You'd never want to imagine a guy with his balls hanging all the way to the floor. You don't imagine that. That's just, yeah. That was that was a really horrible sight. Uh, I wanna congratulate my uncle. Um, he just uh, got his citizenship. Yeah. Uh, he did it the old-fashioned way, actually. Um, and I'm not going to say that he, you know, filled up the paperwork and all that stuff. He did the old, real-fashioned way. And he was by marrying a big white girl for papers. Oh, okay. <laughs> People just let their own business out. <laughs> um, I believe uh, that's all the time I have tonight, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Why is this not working? Keep it going for Mauricio Flores, man. You did great. I, I have some notes. I wrote down and I, I, I underlined it three times, fuck Todd. Fuck Todd, yeah, can we just get everybody to say that? Fuck Todd. Fuck Todd, yeah. And then you talked about like, you didn't know what the B was and be like LGBT. Yeah, I'm the B. I'm the B. Even I'm confused sometimes. It's like, you know, I talk about that like during Pride Month. I'm like, if you try, like, sometimes I hear like the acronym, I'm like, man, I could really go for a BLT right now. And then I'm like, well, if they tried to like gay that up, what would they, what would they like put in the BLT to make it gay? Grapes? Would that just be the G? I guess. Yeah, that's pretty fucking gay. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you laugh right now, but you know there's somebody in an hour beast test kitchen that's like, yeah, throw fucking grapes in there. The gays will eat that shit up. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Um, I, I understood that some of your jokes, uh, some people had some difficulties. Maybe if we can get a sponsor next time, I can get some subtitles going. And then uh, you mentioned that you role played, right, with your wife, ex-wife. Ex I'm surprised you didn't mention that you like role played as the coyote. 
tried to bring her over the border oh. to coming. Yeah. That's your problem. She didn't come enough. Uh, and then you mentioned that you like love hanging out with white people, right? And then that we turn into Mexicans when we get a little alcohol in us. It's because we're white people from Tulsa, right? We were raised on Cas Bonita. Okay? You guys all remember Cas Bonita, right? Yeah, we get a few alcohols in it, and we're like, raise that little flag. I want some more fucking enchiladas. I want to play at the arcade and fuck everybody else. Yeah, that's what I, that was my rant. Yeah, fuck Cas Bonita. Yeah, anyway, give it up for Mauricio, everybody. Hey, fellow hipsters and people that have culture or something. I'm Jared Ralphie Allen, host of Unloading Meat, and we need sponsors for the show. If you identify with this fucked up hat I'm wearing, these shitty tattoos, or any other cultural references that are behind me, reach out to your favorite sponsors and tell them to sponsor the show Unloading Meat. Now, back to acting like I wasn't impressed by anything. I wish this podcast could be on vinyl. Ah, oh, I love you all. This has been a good night. You guys ready for the next comedian? Yeah, this guy. Oh my God, he is hilarious. Uh, all the way from Memphis. Please give it up for Tulsa's. What is it? What is it? Amazing. What is it? Friendly neighborhood funny man. Yeah, that, that's a long fucking title, Juju. Give it up for Juju Rashad, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, my friendly neighborhood in crime, Mr. Meat. Go theater. How in the hell y'all doing? God damn it, the black man has arrived. He feeling good because the white man bought him a drink. Shout out to the white man that bought him the drink earlier. God damn, I'm loose to the motherfucker now. I'm feeling good up here on this stage. <laughs> but make y'all, I'm feeling, ooh. I don't forgot my whole set, honestly. I I don't even know what I'm finna talk about up here in this motherfucker. <laughs> but I do got some shit on my mind. I'm finna get off to y'all real quick. If y'all don't mind. Okay, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Okay, so uh first of all, uh I don't fuck with my baby mama. Just fuck with my baby mama entirely. Cause you know, you know, she a good woman all, she a good woman all, but you know, thing about it, she a real nigga too. She more of a real nigga than me. That's the thing about it, like I don't appreciate that. You know, I got size, you know, I caught some size, you know, early on in our marriage, you know. You know, the first side was I found out she was a lie. Cause you know, when we first met, she catfished me on Tinder. You know, I, you know, I, I you know, I, I was ignorant at the time, you know, I ain't nothing but 20. I ain't nothing but 20, you know. She was good 32, but you know, that's story for another day. Uh, this ain't no R. Kelly type situation, though. You know, I was legal. <laughs> but, you know, you know, I'm being on Tinder. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm checking the whole scene out on Tinder. You know, I see her. But, you know, think about it, you know, she had she had a pretty face, but she had nothing but headshots on her face. That was the thing about it. So, you know, I ain't think nothing about it. She was pretty as hell. So I went here to inbox her. So we talking for a little hot minute. We talking for a little hot minute. And she fucking around to what kind of car she drive. She tell me she drive a Hellcat. Now y'all understand. Now me being a, a young man with no car at that point, I'm ready to drive that motherfucker. <laughs> so I go ahead, I'm like, go, go ahead, pull up, go ahead, pull up, go ahead, pull up, go ahead, pull up. I got the gas money for you. I know you take diesel. <laughs> but you know, she gave me a little warning first. You know, I had to ask a little question. She said, I asked, I said, Okay, so I said, before you pull up, why you don't got nothing but headshots on your Tinder profile? And she said this per quote, I have nothing but headshots on my Tinder profile because I have a Coca-Cola body shape and I don't want men to use me as a sex toy. Okay, I can respect that, I can respect that. Even though that's exactly what I was finna do, but she didn't need to know that. That was none of her goddamn business. So you know, I go here, I'm cleaning up my room and whatnot. I'm cleaning up, I'm getting ready for her to, I'm getting ready for her to come by the house. And you know, cleaning up my room, all of a sudden, I just heard a loud ass fart can sounding like driving down the street. Like this is exactly what it sounded like. I ain't finna count to y'all. All I heard was <laughs> 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 
Now, me being a nosy black man in Memphis, Tennessee, living in the hood, <laughs> I had to figure out what the fuck was going on. So I stood my nosy black ass outside, and I kind of got pissed off because it was her, and it wasn't a Hellcat that she was driving either. It was a goddamn Nissan Altima. <laughs> Hold on. Y'all keep laughing. Y'all keep laughing at that. Not only was a goddamn Nissan Altima, this heifer had Hello Kitty stickers on it. <laughs> then had the nerd to have Hello Cat written on the goddamn side. Then I'd have stepped so far out the door, she would have saw me step out the door and then hocked the horn so I could see her. This motherfucker horn and said, meow. <laughs> I said, this bitch done caught a meow to me. So, you know, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of irritated by the fact she done catfished about the car. So I'm like, okay, cool. She's still fine as hell. So, you know, I'm just waiting for her to get up out the car. Cause she had five percent tent. So, you know, I couldn't quite see her on the inside. But y'all, she stepped up out this goddamn car. Now, remember how I said she had a Coca-Cola body shape, right? Now, what she didn't tell me was she was a Coca-Cola body shape two liter. <laughs> a goddamn two liter, just like I said. So, you know, she was, she was a big woman. You know, she was kind of thick and chunky. And then on top of that, she was 5'10", so she exactly my height. So me and her seeing eye to eye, but the thing about it, the weight difference is a whole 140 pound difference. This motherfucker a good 290, 286. I'm like, God damn, baby girl. Then she, then she didn't walk closer to me. I see she got all types of eczema and acne on her face. And I'm like, damn. You ain't tell me it's a Coca-Cola with the peanuts in it either though. Don't say nah, cause I still drank that coke. Yeah. That's why we got two year old now, I got that shit. I drank the shit out that goddamn coke. I was mad in the motherfucker when I got done too. I was like, where the fuck was you at when I was working at Amazon need a snack during these 12 hour shifts? God damn it got me out here starving and shit. <laughs> but y'all, that was the first strike, like I said, she was alive. And the second strike came when I cheated on her. <laughs> I cheated on her and she took my side bitch from me. <laughs> yeah, so come to find out she liked pussy just as much as I did. It was a whole type of different situation because the thing about it, I didn't know till my side bitch texted me while I was at work. She gonna text me at work, she was like, you know your baby mama just ate my pussy better than you ever did, you nigga? No. No, it's right, cause thing about it, I was mad to the motherfucker. I was like, I was like, what the fuck you mean my baby mama ate your pussy? <laughs> so you know, I did like what any real nigga do. I, look, I did what any real nigga good would do. I clucked the fuck right, right, right to that healthy house, I ate her pussy. Now nah, fuck that my baby mama text you. What you ain't finna do is tell me motherfucker I ate your pussy better than I ever did. Well, if I got a title to claim, shit. That's the only thing I got going in my life. Shit, I work at Renner Center. Shit, I need something good going on. Shit. That's what my girlfriend gave us the nickname Thunder and Lightning. And she gave me lightning because lightning come fast and it come first. Shit. Something gotta work around here. Well, you know, I went back over though. And then at that point, we officially got into a pussy eating contest. She didn't know, I didn't know. But this side helper gonna have the nerd text me and her back and forth, talking about, yeah, he just came over here, she just came over here. And it got to a point where I just got tired one night, y'all. I got tired, I said, fuck it, I ain't go over there no more. My mouth tired, I got locked jaw. <laughs> Feel like Kodak back around here, shit. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the bed. Uh, I got stuck on babysitting duty one night because she was going out with the girls, apparently. <laughs> and, you know, this night, damn, the lights done went off. Y'all can't even see me no more. Shit. 
How y'all gonna cut the lights off on a black man? Shit, now I gotta smile hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit got in. Hold on, what's going on with the mic? I just gotta say your racism was adorable. <laughs> Jerry, I went to a Catholic college. I got you gotta get used to it, okay? <laughs> I understand every side of that shit. <laughs> well now it makes a story. <laughs> I don't forget what the fuck I was saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we got, you know. Yeah, so, you know, I got tired. I done got locked y'all for meeting the pussy. <laughs> there we go, right back on track. Thank you, Miss White Lady. I appreciate you. You deserve a drink after this. <laughs> but, you know, I done got tired of eating. I got tired of eating pussy. And, you know, she done went out with the girls and one night. You know, I done went, I know she went to eat, eat her pussy and, you know, put the strap on her and all that and whatnot. I ain't give a fuck. But this one night, I don't know what the hell happened, but she came home smelling like an Asian seafood market. <laughs> and you know, I ain't never really just been home for this kind of shit, you know, cause you know, when I normally went to happy, you know, I go out on my own. But you know, this kind of shit, kind of, kind of fishy. And she pulled a real nigga on a real nigga and kissed me on the forehead and said, good night, daddy, I love you. I'll make you breakfast in the morning. And cuddle with me. And the thing about it, I was a little spoon in this situation, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, but as a man, I felt appreciated in that moment. Yeah. And yeah, so at that point, I was just like, yeah, you keep doing what you gotta do, cause I'm paying rent, you coming home and cuddling me, you can do what you gotta do, baby girl. Shit, I love you too, goddammit. But then it was at that moment I realized, it wasn't her going, it wasn't the pussy she was going to eat that was making her smell like a seafood market. It was the body product she was using. Cause you know, she was using Bad Bath uh, Body Works at the time. And you know, it kinda throw your pH balance off a little bit, you know. Cause I started realizing her pussy was tasting like a McDonald's spicy Sprite a little bit. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little tangy. I was like, damn, we got a little bit of lemon lime in here, shit. Gonna make me a hot toddy and shit. COVID 19 was not getting through her at all. <laughs> no wonder she never got that shit. I was like, damn, that explained everything. So, you know, I had to upgrade a little bit. You know, I put her, I put her on some dove and some dial. But, you know, she, she done got grown now, six years later, and decided to go out and buy her lonesome. You know, she went about her lonesome and she started using Irish Spring. And this was strike three. This is why I say I gotta stop fucking with her. Cause I was spring, it made her smell strong than a motherfucker. It made her smell like how she weighed, god damn it. <laughs> like this motherfucker walk around smell like an Irish Celtic warrior. I was like, God damn. You smell like you whoop my ass and an alcoholic at the same time. <laughs> motherfucker, you smell like Ike and I'm Tina. Shit. <laughs> I said, I gotta get you off of this shit. Cause goddamn, you smell like you looking for your pot of gold when I eat your pussy. That motherfucker wanna grab my head and try to strangle me and shit. <laughs> when uh, how much time I got, Jerry? About three minutes. All right, I got one more joke for y'all. So, uh, I hate sounds. Uh, getting old, I hate certain sounds. Uh, to the point I can't even watch certain sports. I can't watch tennis no more. Cause tennis, you know, watch tennis. The only sounds you hear is tennis is, uh, uh. Oh, uh, you know, that sound like Serena Williams a little bit, don't it? You got, got a little bit, you got a little bit of off in it, you know. And then at the end, you know, someone get a little bit of point at the end of tennis, all you hear is, you know, motherfuckers clapping. You know, ain't no more, ain't no more sound after that. And it pisses me off because if I want to hear grunting and clapping all the time, why well, I just can't watch Pornhub? Now, I'm pretty sure I could tune in and watch Tina Trump uh, get her booty cheeks clapped and listen to her grunt to, and uh, grunt and moan the whole time instead of listening to Serena Williams grunt and moan and wondering if she a man. <laughs> Every time I hear a t hit a tennis ball, I'll be like, God damn, you got a tennis ball and two tennis balls and a racket under your skirt, girl? Cause shit, you sound strong than a motherfucker. But anyway, I ain't gonna keep y'all long. I'm just Rashad. 
and a friendly neighborhood effective advice of life before I get out of here. Uh, most men that have been sexually assaulted are not good in bed, and I can prove that case because my sister hasn't called me back in six years. <laughs> y'all be saying have a good night. Here's y'all host, Jerry Raphael. Allen. I do all this material in Oklahoma, and you start bringing in Arkansas shit. What the fuck? What's your favorite movie, Juju? Where the fuck you going? Let's get a drink, too. Damn. This is like WWF in here with this fucking chair. Give it up for Juju, guys. He did great. What's your favorite movie? No. Django. Again, the racism is so adorable. First of all, it's not even like that. It's because, it's because of one scene, and you know exactly what it is. I love Django. What scene? Jango's your favorite movie? Nah, I done sat here and watched, I, watched him, watched my wife make 30 bags for you ungrateful sons of bitches. And all I hear is criticize, criticize, criticize. From now on, don't ask me and I for nothing. Wow. Wow. You did a white supremacist better than that part of the audience, I guess. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm just riffing. You guys are doing great. <laughs> no, I love Django. Django was my favorite movie to watch because it was like watching a movie in 4D. Because every time there was like anything racial or anything that was slightly comical, you'd watch all the white people go, where's the black person in the crowd? Okay, are they laughing? Can I laugh? Is it okay? It was like, like doing a stone show. You have to like wait 10 seconds for the delay of the jokes. It's just like something happens. <laughs> yeah, that was my experience with Jingo. It was awesome. Anyway, give it up for Juju, everybody. Exit stage left. You guys ready for our final, final com uh, comedian of the night? Oh, I love this man. So funny. Please give it up for the one, the only, Gary Barbie! Kill it, Barbie. Appreciate it. What's up, Go? That's cool. That's cool. I mean, I'm not doing a eulogy here, guys. You know, we can have fun. Uh, I, you heard it, right? I, my last name is Barbie, and I'm sure you're thinking, boy, I bet he caught a lot of shit for that growing up, but it wasn't too bad, really. I heard all the stupid jokes, you know? I didn't. I never asked to hear one, but people, people insisted. Uh, heard all the dumb ones like, you know, Barbie wears Ken. Uh, Barbie dream house, you know, that's the cutest dick I've ever seen, you know, just the typical <laughs> Typical shit, you know, I never asked to hear it <laughs> But uh, I, I've been pretty jazzed up about this. I got my haircut for this deal and uh, fuck yes, and I hate getting my haircut though and I went in and I, I sat down me and the lady we went back and forth You know, she's like, what do you want? I'm like, that's your job and uh, we ended up settling on the Hitler youth and uh, I'm liking it, you know I'm starting to think Kanye's got some really good ideas. Uh, yeah. Is Kanye crazy? I don't know. I don't know. I know it just takes a lot for Alex Jones to be like, this guy's fucking out there right now. But no. Is he right? I don't know. I don't know. No. Uh, you know, like I said, the world's crazy right now. I miss I miss the old times, you know, like, like when guns were cool before, you know, high school kids found them. I thought that was fun. Uh, <laughs> like I said, the whole world's out of whack. Titanic still killing people. That's crazy. <laughs> who would have, who would have guessed? Uh, they found drugs in the White House. I'm sure, it's not the first time. I'm sure, it's not the first time, but it's the first time they told us. And it shouldn't have it shouldn't have affected my life, but it did. And uh, you know, me and my my wife, we were fighting about it. And she's like, "Why does it bother you?" I was like, "They found coke in the White House." So now I have to vote Democrat. And uh, that's new for me. You know? Oh, we're all blue in here. Okay, that's fine. We're all pro Nazi. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to check. <laughs> Sexual assault cases are through the roof, you know? There's nothing funny about that. Stop. But I know we didn't pay enough attention to R. Kelly the first time, and we saw how that shook out. Uh, then he had the balls on him to release an album from prison called I Admit It, and I think that's pretty fucking wild. Not many people know this, but I was sexually assaulted as a kid, and I don't talk about it very often. 
But uh, I had this baseball coach. He was relentless. Made me hate baseball. Made me stay late after practice. He would drive me home. Made me hate it. And I didn't know what to do. So I went to my brother. He had played, f- played for him a few years before I did. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. He said, do what I couldn't do. Call this coach out. Call him out for all this shit. I, 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 was, I, I agreed to it. I, was, I had so much anxiety that night, I couldn't even shit. I was so nervous for baseball. So I get to practice the next day. I wait for the whole team to get there. I, I gather everybody up. And I, I go up to the coach, the whole team, everybody. I'm finally going to call him out. And I went up to him and I said, Dad, I don't really want to fucking play baseball for you anymore. It's my dad. Uh, <laughs> me and my dad have a different relationship, you know. I mean, I don't blame him. I was a very fuckable kid. You know, it's not really his fault. <laughs> I mean, really, he was gay. I just laid there, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, settle down. It's my dad. We have a different relationship. That's my papa. It's my dad. <laughs> I still don't watch baseball. Um, <laughs> no. No, it's like it's a different relationship. Good guy. Um, no, he, uh, he should have died from COVID, but... That was just my opinion, you know. I didn't really have any facts behind it. <laughs> no. Back to the kid fucking. Uh, I'm sure he guessed it. I, I'm a huge fan of porn. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Um, I'm not a porn hub guy. I'm an ex-videos guy myself. But uh, hell yeah. Anything that shows fucking, right? Um, no, I love. I do love porn. What I can't stand is porn ads, and I I know most of us know there's ads before porn, and typically anymore it's camster or jerk mate, just normal shit no one cares about, but uh, every now and then there's this weird voiceover on a cartoon, it's like, you won't last 20 seconds playing this game. I I gotta be honest, I won't last 20 seconds in the actual video if we just wrap that shit up, you know? I could come before the ad's over, I just have more self-control than that. An ad, I, I'm glad it's non-existent anymore. This porn star, you sh- she used to knock on your screen and go, are you seriously jerking off? Like, well, I'd like to. <laughs> Is your shrimp dick seriously in your hands? You know, and it's like, I'm already, I, I'll be honest, I'm watching weird porn. Porn I won't tell my friends I'm watching. I won't even look at myself in the mirror when I leave the bathroom. I refuse to. The last thing I need is some fucking porn star degrading me while my five-year-old's standing outside the bathroom saying shit like, Dad, I can see your feet. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> She's like, why are your toes curling? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. That's why. I don't fucking worry about it. (laughs) I do. I love porn. Can't help it. I love it. One thing I can't get behind is fetishes. And we all have them. You know, I'm not here to judge anyone's fetish. I don't care what it is. But through my research, um, I found out there's (laughs) there's a lot of weird fetishes out there. The person you're sitting next to could be a fucking degenerate. You know, it. there's millions of them. And it could be as simple as I love a girl with big, you know, beautiful blue eyes. Or I love watching a girl shoot ping pong balls out of her ass. It's neither here nor there. I'm not here to judge. Everybody has fetishes. The fetish I can't get behind is feet. I think feet are fucking disgusting. I can't. They're gross. We've all stepped in dog shit at some point in our lives. It's gone between our toes. They don't make water hot enough to get that shit off, you know. Like I, I, don't, I don't like it. But, you know, me and my wife, we, we get hot and heavy. We try new shit all the time. And we tried the foot deal. And uh, she, she ended up giving me a foot job. And I, I wasn't for me. I'll be honest with you, it's not for me. Especially because I spent the next week with athlete's dick. And that wasn't worth a fuck. <laughs> not worth a shit. No, it did. It itched real bad. Um, <laughs> no, I also can't. I, 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 I read the other day that 70% of couples in this country do strap on stuff. And that's crazy to me. I can't. I can't do it. I think if I really hunkered down and, you know, I could do it, but I refuse to lose, lose power over my household. I refuse to do that. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I, I'm, I gotta be honest. I just, there's no way. I, my wife, my daughter starts calling me mom. No fucking way. I'm not doing that. No way. My wife's like, take the fucking trash out. I'm like, God damn it. I got to. I'm not going to do it. No, I don't, uh. I understand a lot of it, and honestly, a while through COVID, believe it or not, I I gained quite a bit of weight, and I, you know, I'm also married, so I was comfortable, and that's another reason I pushed all that weight on. But I didn't know I didn't know I'd gained weight, and I didn't know I needed a kick in the ass to to start losing weight. And uh, my wife actually gave me the kick in the ass I needed. We got hot and heavy one night. We get to fucking around, and uh, she tried titty fucking me, and uh, it's like that's it for me. Especially because I started, like, pushing them together. And I was like, what, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I like, sucked the tip of it. I'm like, that's weird for me. 
<laughs> no, it's not true. Maybe it is. I don't know. Who you decide. But <laughs> no, and then through that, I wanted to get healthier, not just physically. I, mentally, I wanted to get better, and uh, I didn't want to do something boring and go see a, a regular therapist. So I searched out a hypnotherapist, and uh, believe it or not, they're actually very hard to book. You can book one here in Tulsa. It's very hard to do. Uh, I found mine on Men Seeking Men on Craigslist. This has been a while back, but uh, he's a good guy. Uh, his warehouse was nice. It was very nice. But I went in. I did the whole deal. I thought it was very stupid. I really did. I, I f- did you know an hour of him talking soft to me, and uh, I left. I thought it was dumb. And I went home and I told my wife about it, who's pretty much a hippie. Like she don't shave and shit normally. You know, it's not really her thing. Uh, but I was telling her about it, and she was like, "You won't let it happen, bro," because she's a hippie. And uh, so you won't let it, you won't relax enough. You have too much trauma with your baseball coach, bro. It won't fucking happen. So she's going to prove me wrong. She's like, I'm going to prove to you it works. I said, well, prove it to me. So we went together. And I went in first. The doctor sat me down. He leaned me back. He started kissing me. And I made that part up. It's not true at all. Um, I said, look, man, I'm going to be honest. I think this is horse shit. I don't think it works. And he said, what can I do to make you believe it works? I said, uh, honestly, if you want me to love it and believe it, just make my wife absolutely love anal. Just make her love anal. That's all I ask. He said, you know how professional it is? I said, well, you kissed me 20 minutes ago. So <laughs> but, uh, so I leave. My wife goes in. She comes out. I still don't know what they talked about. She still won't tell me, but I can promise you to this, abs- I mean, to this day, my wife's absolutely obsessed with fucking me in my butt. So I don't know. <laughs> Did it work? I don't know. Who, <laughs> who knows? No, I don't go to the doctor. I fucking refuse to. I had a whole talk about vaccines tonight. Refuse it. Trump said no. I don't do it. No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> I, uh, no, I don't. I don't go to the doctor. If if my dicks are dripping blue paint, I would consider it. But I don't typically go. And uh, I went filming her the fuck a while back, and I was, I was bitching to my mom about it, and she was like, "You gotta go to the doctor." And I finally, I folded. I did. I folded. And I was like, "You know what? Fuck it. I'll go to the doctor." So I called the doctor, gave him the whole rundown. Here's how I'm feeling, blah, blah, blah. And they say, you can't come in. I said, why? And they said, you have symptoms of COVID. I said, what are symptoms of COVID? And they said, well, you're alive. I was like, okay. <laughs> so what do I need to do now? And they said, you'll FaceTime the doctor. And I was like, okay. So I FaceTime the doctor. I can't see him very good. And I, I give him the whole rundown. Here's how I'm feeling, blah, blah, blah. And he hits me with a 180 and says, I think you need a prostate exam. I was like, shit. I'm not even 30. I'm not used to cramming stuff in my ass without my wife there. You know, it's not normal for me. I said, so how would we even do it? It's, it's a virtual call. He said, set your phone down. I'll walk you through. I'll walk you through the whole thing. And I hate to say it, broken arrow, but I folded. I sat my phone down, and I bent over, and I got about here, and all I heard was, nice. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I snatched my phone, you know, because I'm pissed. As soon as I saw it, I said, well, God damn it, Dad. I didn't mean to call you again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, fuck him, right? Uh, like I said, we got a different relationship, me and my papa. It's just different. Okay. Um, no, he uh, he actually caught a very serious case way, way before it like became mainstream of uh, meth addiction. And uh, now he did. We we didn't. I didn't live grow up in a dope house, but there was definitely dope there. And uh, like when I was a kid, I just thought everybody's garages blew up. I thought that was pretty normal, you know. Which honestly, I know it's shocking, but I, I am a parent, so I get you know his ups and downs. I don't fuck my kids, um, but. <laughs> Settle down. He didn't fuck me. It was just it was sensual. Uh, no, I am a parent, which is shocking. I have two kids, and I've always been just shocked I could get in there deep enough to have them. You know, and uh, here I am with two. I've only hit the bottom once, and that was with a running start. You know, I didn't. I never expected to have kids, but uh, hell yeah, you start about here, and you just run into it, and hope you hit the right one, not the little gap between it. Um, <laughs> no, I am I am shocked I had kids, and uh, I have two. They're great kids. They're fucking hiding in the other room right now. And uh, but there's you know going into being a parent, there all you hear is negative shit. Like, dude, your life's fucked. It's over. Blah blah blah. But I disagree. I think being a parent is one of the best things I've ever done. I don't know if we have parents here, but I fucking I love it. Love being a parent. Uh, there's shit people doesn't don't tell you. You know, like your kids will cock block you more than Chris Hansen will. And uh, <laughs> Like, me and my wife, we've been playing Just the Tips for, like, six years. And uh, I don't know if it's a pheromone that gets in the air, and they're like, Dad's about to get pussy? No fucking way. Not in my house. I heard Mom Titty fucks him. No way. <laughs> Not in my fucking house. 
But no, being a parent's hard, you know. I, disciplining your kids when you think it's funny, that's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And like my daughter, she's cussed three times in her entire life. The first time, no big deal. She's like two. I used to put her up in the fridge, and she would like pick f- fruit and stuff, and she'd do it all cute. And she's like, I want raspberries. And I was like, oh, you want raspberries? She got super sure and went, fuck yes. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know how to parent that, so I was like, fuck yeah, you can have fucking raspberries, you know, I gotta get a little fucking, a little meaner. The second time she ever cussed, we were leaving a restaurant, me and my brother, and she's in the back seat. My brother honks at this guy, and he goes, go, motherfucker, and my sweet little two-year-old goes, yeah, go, motherfucker. I'm like, shit. Where is a straight-up gangster back there, man? That's my ride or die. But the third time she ever cussed, I actually got to go pick her up from uh, pre-K. I was very excited. I go pick her up. She comes out. She's glowing. Like, immediately, I'm like, this is gonna be a good day. Like, I knew immediately. She hops up in the truck. There was no, how do your day, how was your day, none of that shit. She goes, shut the fuck up, Dad. Ricky, <laughs> Ricky got in trouble again today. Now, I know you don't know, but Ricky's a fucking problem. He doesn't pick on my daughter, but he's just a fucking, I, I would absolutely beat the fuck out of this kid. I don't care that he's five. I don't give a shit. I hate this kid. He reminds me a lot of me. And uh, she goes, Ricky got in trouble again today. I said, oh, yeah, not shocking. She said, yeah, he said a bad word. I said, yeah, what was it? Now, 99.9% of the time, my daughter goes, I can't tell you, it's a bad word. I thought that's where we were going. I said, so what was the word? She said, oh, he called this girl a bitch. I'm like, oh, well, it's a good thing we don't talk like that, right? And she said, yeah, he called her a bitch. So yeah, I got it the first time. We didn't have to fucking elaborate on it. She said, yeah, he lost the race to a girl. So, like, really, Ricky's the bitch, right? And I was like, yeah, I mean, you can't fucking, <laughs> can't fucking argue with logic. She's right. Fuck Ricky. I don't care what anybody says. Fuck that kid. He has a, what you would call a Kentucky waterfall. He has a mullet going on. Fuck him. <laughs> no. Uh, on a fun note, my mom died. And uh, she did. Deader than shit, some would say. Um, no, she did. She died. She fucking, you know, fought cancer super hard for two weeks. None of us saw it coming. Who would have guessed, you know, two packs of Marlboro Reds a day? Who would have guessed? Not me, you know? Hell yeah, dude. She's a cowboy. She watched Yellowstone. No, she did, though. She died from cancer, and it, it sucked. And that's honestly, that's why we always leave one chair open right here. And I made that up. That's not true at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, uh, she's never got to see me do stand-up comedy. I've always wanted her to see me do stand-up comedy. She's never made it. And I know a lot of people, when I say that, they're like, oh, that's so sad. She got sick before. No, she was very healthy when I started. She, uh <laughs> She fucking refused to come. Um, no, so I, you know, laughter is the best medicine. And uh, so she's in the hospital, and I was like, now's the time to bring up the story when she caught me jacking off when I was 17. You know, now's the time. That's how dumb I am. But I did. I brought it up. I was, I was 17. I had buddies over, and, you know, we're being dumb outside. And this girl texted me and said, call me. I'm horny. So I shoot my buddies away. I go get butt naked and hop in bed. Proceed to have phone sex, get off the phone, start jacking off, because I don't know how phone sex works. And uh, I, uh, I didn't know I talk dirty to you, you talk dirty to me, there's awkward silence, we get off. I didn't know that. I can't make a woman come in real life, let alone over the fucking phone. So I get, uh, I get done, I'm, I'm just playing five on one in my room, it's 2.30 in the morning. I'm just like, man, I, and to this day, it's the one time I've ever jacked off in my room, to this fucking day. I jack off in the bathroom now so much, I can't come without shitting, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in there just playing five on one, enjoying my life. And at 2.30 something in the morning, my door opens. My mom's standing in the threshold. And all I can come up with at 17 years old was, Mommy, no. And I mean, to the day she died, I never called my mom Mommy one time other than that. It's the one time. So I think the next day is going to be awkward. Fuck no. The next two weeks, my mom won't even make eye contact with me. Like if we were going to walk down the hall at the same time, she would open a window and fucking climb outside. She refused to be around me. So I told her that in the hospital, and uh, she immediately got more cancer and died. So that's my time, guys. I'm Garrett Barbie. Thank you very much. Keep it going for Garrett Barbie, everybody. He did fantastic. Uh, I have some notes for you, buddy. You mentioned Pornhub. You don't like Pornhub? X videos just feels what you need at that time. Have you noticed what happened to Pornhub recently? Has anybody tried to log on to Pornhub on their phone? Oh, if you try to go right now on your cellular, oh wait, try. Because our internet goes through Texas, it's blocked. Texas passed a bill yesterday and they blocked Pornhub. Yeah. 
So because we use the same servers up here, if you go on like AT&T or T-Mobile, it's blocked here in Oklahoma still. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of frustrated people this weekend, guys. It's, uh, it's blocked on mine. Last, when I was in Texas a, a couple weeks ago, I called them uh, Oklahoma's Mexico. And what a fucking shit show that stirred up. They were so fucking mad at me. <laughs> and then you mentioned feet fucking was gross, right? Uh, I'm just wondering how much lube would you need for the feet fucking? Like, my ex-wife freaked out whenever I slipped my dick in the wrong hole. Imagine, like, how do I convince her that it was an accident when the full fuck gets up to her pussy? Like, fuck. Oh, they make a hole? You can fuck the... Oh. The more you know. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, then he... I'm going to leave you with this. You mentioned ads on porn. Yeah, I'll say this. Even being bi... Yeah, I, I, I'm bisexual, guys. I like to call myself a faggot timeshare. Um, that didn't land well. Think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, even being bi, I still don't escape that. I hop on Grinder and I get the worst ads possible. Even worse than that. You get what? I, you want to know what I get? Have you tried Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> on fucking Grinder. Yeah, yeah. You da- yeah, I did. I downloaded it. Exclusive. He downloaded Grinder. I did uh, once, two times. Um, it's just a sausage fest on there, man. I had fucking. Spoiler alert. I did. I didn't know it was a gay thing. I downloaded it and I did very well on there. Did you just think that it was like a sandwich app? Like it was like Jimmy John's or something? <laughs> well, that's. It's the right shoes. Oh, oh, I love the shoes. <laughs> that's a new it. What position is that? That's not top or bottom. Is that side? Oh, your first top. Oh, I was gonna say earlier there was somebody talking about. Oh, Lacey, you were talking about the struggles of being of riding dick, right? Yeah. The problem. The, the way to fix that. The way to fix that. Just gain like 400 pounds. They'll never ask you to top. It never happens in my life, ever. I do that once, they're dead. Just fucking dead. All right, give it up for Garrett Barbie, everybody. Guys, this has been Unloading Me Presents. Thank you so much for coming out. We are going to do this one more time next month, but it's going to be another roast battle. So we're going to have eight comedians all vying for $200 on the pot. It's going to be an awesome night. It's going to be recorded. I hope you guys come out next month. Thank you so much for being here. And if you guys want to, we have merch out there. All the proceeds go to helping make these shows happen every month. Thank you so much.